Rather, let us give glory to God, who calls us to use our freedom peaceably. Red, Pentecost Sunday, it's one of my favorite of the year, because this is the day the church was born, and we were given the Holy Spirit. This is a chapel glorifying God in worship, service, fellowship, and love. Let us pray. Spirit of wind and fire, come to us this day, bring us from our fears, lift us up when we have fallen, dust us off and set us squarely on the path you hope and that you have set before us, for we have hope. Remind us that we are never far from your presence, get us ready for the great adventure and opportunities that lie before us. Help us to be good and willing workers for you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please stand as you're able for our opening hymn, which is 539, O Spirit of the Living God. We are sending all the verses.
worship. Come, Holy Spirit, ignite our hearts with joy and confidence. For God has done wondrous things for us. Come, Holy Spirit, fill us with the power of the rushing wind that we may faithfully serve you in all that we do. For Christ has called each of us and blessed us. Come, Holy Spirit, be with us today. Come us to boldly proclaim Christ risen. Amen. Amen. And now please join me in the prayer of confession. Abba, Abba Father, parent of us all, bind us together as your children. Free us from the change of the division and divisiveness. Unstop our blocked ears, that we might listen and hear one another with understanding and compassion. Pour out unity and love so abundant through the power of your Holy Spirit that all resistance to a new Pentecost community may be swept away. Amen. Hear now these words of assurance. Everyone who calls on the name of God has been saved, is being saved, and will be saved. Amen. Amen. And now our choir will sing the anthem entitled, Spirit, Come Down.
hear the prayer of illumination. Wait, do you notice something about this moment? The Spirit is near, and as near as our breath. Breathe, and will you breathe with me right now? Do you notice something about this breath? The spirit is here in our very breath, ready to speak, ready to move, ready to transform our lives. Amen. The scripture this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They, see, they saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages, other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now they were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard his own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears them in our native language? Parthians, Medes, and Edomites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, Cappadocia, Pontus, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs. We hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own language and our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked one another, what does this mean? Some, however, made fun of them and said, they have to have too much to drink, too much wine. Then Peter stood up with the eleven, raised his voice, and addressed the crowd. Fellow Jews and all of you who live in Jerusalem, let me explain this to you. Listen carefully to what I say. These people are not drunk as you suppose, it's only nine in the morning. No, this is what was spoken by the prophet Joel. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days and they will prophesy. I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and billows of smoke. The sun will be turned to darkness and the moon to blood before the coming of the great and glorious day of the Lord. And everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have to tell you, I did apologize to Sandra when I gave her the assignment because I know that's one of the harder passages to read with all those names, in it. and she did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> One named Alice tells about her nephew's 10-year-old son who came and visited on a hot July weekend. Look, Alice, he said as he ran over to where she was sitting, I found a kite. Can we go fly it? Oh, Alice glanced out the window and noticed there was not a breeze stirring. She said, I'm sorry, Tripper. The wind is not, blow is not blowing today. The kite won't fly. Well, 
He's a determined 10-year-old. I think it's windy enough, he said. I can get it to fly as he raced out the back door. Alice peeked through the Venetian blinds to watch determination in action. Up and down the yard he ran, pulling the kite string attached. The kite had Batman on it, but it remained at shoulder level. He ran back and forth as hard as little 10 year old legs could carry him, looking back at the kite trailing behind. After about 10 minutes of unsuccess, he came back and Alice said, well, how did it go? Fine, he said, not wanting to admit defeat. I got it to fly some. As he walked past her to put the kite away into the closet, she heard him say under his breath, I guess I'd have to wait for the wind. <laughs> but at that moment, Alice says, she heard a voice speak to her heart. Alice, the voice said, sometimes you are just like that. You want to do it your way instead of waiting for the wind, the wind of God. In the first chapter of Acts, before his ascension into heaven, Jesus instructed the disciples to wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit came upon them. The biblical word for spirit is the same word for wind. The disciples were waiting for the wind the wind of God. And that's too, as was so well read by Sandra, when the day of Pentecost came, they were together in one place. Suddenly the sound like a blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were. They saw what seemed to be flames like tongues of fire that came and rested on each of them. And all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit. And they began speaking in tongues as the Spirit enabled them. They had waited on the wind. They waited for the Spirit. And a mighty wind it was. It blew so hard that the world has never been the same since. After Christmas and Easter, Pentecost ought to be the most hallowed day of the Christian year. Now to be sure, we would not be here today if it weren't for the manger and Bethlehem. And when the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And who can doubt that's one of the most important statements in all of literature. And of course, the empty tomb, the cross, the center of our faith. Without the Easter event, there would be no hope, no salvation. But how would the world know about the manger, the cross, the empty tomb, resurrection, if it weren't for Pentecost? When the wind of God blew and the church was born, who would have protected the Holy Scripture with their very life, if not to the Church of Christ? Who would have sent out evangelists, missionaries, teachers to tell the good news of Jesus Christ? Who would have carried on Jesus' healing of bodies, minds, and souls, if not for the Church? I don't know if you still hear it, it was a fashionable statement in the 60s where Christians would say, Jesus, yes, church, no. A little short-sighted thinking. How will future generations know if, about Jesus if the church is not around to give a living witness, which is what we do? <laughs> we have our faults in the church. There is much that needs to be corrected in the church, but the church is Christ's body. Pentecost is the church's birthday. And what a day of celebration it should be. 
So let's look at a few things about that first Pentecost. In the first, first page, first place, we notice that the disciples were all gathered together in one place. Now, there's an old joke, and you're allowed to groan if you want. What car is mentioned in the Bible? The answer, of course, is a Honda. The King James Version of this word reads like this. When the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all in one accord in one place. <laughs> <laughs> now that doesn't mean all 11 disciples would fit in one mid-sized sedan. What it does mean, though, is there was a unity of spirit among the followers of Jesus. There was an openness towards one another and a concern for each one's well-being. Christ's disciples or about 120 gathered that day in that room when they received the great outpouring of spiritual joy and grace. It didn't split them in various different groups. They were all together, not groups competing for position and power. There was visible unity among the followers. There was extraordinary love and charity. They cared about one another. They cared about the work that Christ had given them to do. No wonder the Spirit could work with such power. Think of what the Spirit could do through us if we were more loving, more cordial, more committed to the same cause. One of the great scandals of our faith is Christians have spent almost as much time fighting with each other as they have fighting the forces of evil and injustice. One of the strengths of the early church was their love for one another. If we who are the church, Christ's body, the light, the salt of the earth, if we can't love one another and work together for his glory, then may God have mercy on this world. Christ disciples were gathered with one accord. And they say about those early followers, see how they love one another. There's power in such mutual concern. There is a power that we need in the church today. But my friends, I'm going to tell you, I can feel that love in the chapel. We are there, but we need to keep going. There needs to be more of us. There's something else to be said at this point, and that concerns celebration of diversity with Christ's body as well as essential unity. The sign of the Holy Spirit's presence was a tongue of fire, a most suitable emblem. The human tongue is always God's most effective instrument, but unaided by his spirit, the tongue's utterance often sounds like Babel. The human voice needs to be quickened and supported by a divine fire, that superhuman energy and power which the Holy Spirit alone can confer. But notice, distinct fire, tongues of fire appeared over each individual gathered. We are of one in spirit. Unity must be maintained. Nevertheless, it is critical to note that each of us will have our own experience with God's spirit because we differ. Your experience will not be the same as mine. Like we get into trouble every time we try to pour all the followers of Jesus into one mold. It's been God's plan from the beginning that we should have different personalities, different needs, different gifts. We come from diverse cultural backgrounds, from diverse age groups, from diverse occupations, some extroverts, some introverts, some dominant personalities, some others quite submissive. 
but the experience of a Christian in New York City will be far different from the experience of a Christian here in Northern Virginia. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But his followers have always been and always will be radically diverse collection of individuals. We celebrate that diversity. It means that Jesus Christ is Lord of all, the whole world. He's not the savior of any little small group alone. You will notice, I've seen it, that some believers don't believe in expressing any emotions during worship. And then you have the others who are clapping and waving. It is all worship of the Lord and Savior. Now the disciples, despite the presence of the Holy Spirit, were misunderstood. They were perceived as drunk because of their exuberant behavior. It's rare to experience real communication. The kind of communication where every word is completely and totally understood. Years ago, a conscientious homeowner wrote to manufacturer of cast iron pipes telling them that he had found that if he poured pure hydrochloric acid down his drain, it would immediately open up and all the grease would disappear. And he was concerned, is there any way this is going to damage my pipes? Well, the manufacturer wrote him back and said, thank you for your letter. The effect of such acid upon various constructive materials is certain to be deleterious. We therefore strongly urge you to cease, cease such activity in the interest of the future of your plumbing. <clears throat> well, the man read the letter and responded, thanking them for the letter and telling he was relieved that he was doing the right thing for his pipes by using acid. He received another letter. We fear there may have been some miscommunication in our correspondence. Acid of that density applied to cast iron pipes is certain to have dubious results. Therefore, please desist from your current practices. The homeowner read the letter and wrote back to the company thanking them for their response and telling him once again he was delighted that he was doing the right things for his plumbing. The manufacturer then sent a telegram. It says, don't use acid. It rusts the heck out of your pots. <laughs> the possibilities for misunderstanding are endless. Walter Wynn, the New Testament scholar, asked his miracle is Pentecost, a miracle of the tongue or the ear. To understand the Pentecost event exclusive, exclusively as a miracle of the tongue captures only half of what happens. Now there were staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. And when the sound was heard, the crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. <laughs> Listening is just as important in this story. The full miracle of Pentecost involves the <clears throat> Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem who heard the sound and came and listened. The miracle of the tongues put up words in other languages and gave information. The miracle of the ear involves listening and receiving information. When the Spirit comes upon us, which side of the Pentecost do you find yourself on? The tongue or the ear? Do you respond to the Spirit by speaking and acting? Or do you respond to the Spirit by listening and receiving? Tom Allahan is a man who invented or started the Domino's Pizza chain. He's a multimillionaire worth about $400 million. But he had an article about him in People magazine. 
And it said, in earlier days, Tom kept two spiral notebooks in his briefcase, the kind that children use. One is red, like the devil, for material things, and the other is blue, like heaven, for the spiritual things. Until recently, most of the entries would have been in the red book because it played a larger role in Tom's life. After all, he ran the second largest pizza chain in the nation. But these days, most everything is in the blue book. The only notation found in his red notebook has to do with the dream house he's building in Ann Arbor, Michigan. See, he had a midlife change, a change of heart. The article talks about how he's now investing his life, his whole life, in serving God. It said he spent the last summer overseeing construction in a church in Honduras. He said, we have 5,000 pizza outlets. My goal is 5,000 churches. And he explained, when I get to heaven, I don't think St. Peter is going to ask me how many pizzas I sold. Today is the day we celebrate the birth of the church. As we do, let us ask ourselves, do we have that kind of unity, diversity, and spirit to do the things that God calls upon us to do? I believe we do. But if you don't, Pray that the wind will blow on you and into your life and give you the spirit that we need to be a church of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. How are you responding to that spirit? Amen. Please stand as you're able. We will sing hymn 347, the spirit song.
bars of our imprisonments. No, at the power of the Holy Spirit of God. We praise and thank you for the fulfillment of the promise made by your Son, Jesus, that we would have a counselor, a guide. We would thought we would feel no greater joy than we felt on Easter Day when the good news of Jesus' resurrection greeted our ears. But this surpasses all of that. You have come to us in our imprisonment and freed us. You have given us a voice of power and hope to proclaim the good news. You have poured into our lives the Holy Spirit to be with us always. Mm -hmm. These things are so amazing to us. We thank you. We ask that you be with our dear ones who face illnesses, who mourn, who feel lost and alone and hurt in so many ways. Help us to reach out to them with loving kindness in the name of the Holy Spirit. Strengthen us for the times ahead. Give us courage to proclaim your love in our lives. And Lord, we pray for those of our chapel who are not here with us today. And you have a couple who are in rehab. We have some who are in hospice care. We have some who have difficulty getting around. Lord, be with them all. Be with this community. Keep us strong. Keep us safe. Keep us moving forward. It's hard, Lord. It's hard to always get the help we need. But you are always with us. And Monday, Memorial Day, we honor those who have fought and lost their lives for our freedom. The freedom that allows us to worship you wherever we want because you are always with us. But let us not forget the commitment that those individuals and their families made that we are free. But Lord, we are thankful. And now let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, Father who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Could our ushers please come to me? <coughs> Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, as we celebrate the birth of your church, help us to maintain your church and move forward as your community of faith. Bless these gifts we are about to receive and bless all the givers. Bless us so that we can obey the spirit you have placed in us and go and do as you have called us to do. Amen.
people who are joining our church this day. So I would ask, uh, I have a riff right in front of me. <laughs> Sharon and Brenda, would you please come forward? And I'm asking Sandra to stand up here with us for the congregation. Wonderful day. <laughs> they are both coming to us from transfer of letter from their former churches. So I ask you too, will you be loyal to the United Methodist Church and uphold it by your prayers, your service, your gift, and your service? I will. Brothers and sisters, I commend to your love and care these per persons whom this day we recognize into the membership of this congregation, the chapel. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. And your response should be on um, board behind me. Please join me. We recognize the members of Christ's holy church and bid you welcome 
to this congregation of the United Methodist Church. With you, we renew our vows to uphold it, our prayers, our presence, our gifts, and our service. With God's help, we will so order our lives after the example of Christ. As surrounded by steadfast love, you may be established in the way and confirmed and strengthened in the way of peace to life. Welcome to the congregation. We are blessed to have you here. Sharon, we welcome you as well. Hold on, I have one blessing and then you can take them to the back. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, bless, preserve, and keep you now and forevermore. And the people say, Amen. Amen. Now I'm asking Sandra to take them to the back, so please on your way out, go out that way today and welcome them to our congregation. Memorial Day weekend and I just want to let you know that Sunday school will not be held today. Uh, we will do chapter 5 next week. Uh, we are still collecting for Latin hunger relief. I see some bins back there. Uh, Women's Chapel meets on the 7th. Uh, they'll meet in the music room and so please there's a sign up sheet in the back because they will be providing the lunch and they need to know how many people will be coming. Uh, also, just a reminder that tomorrow at 11 o'clock there will be a memorial service here. Great day. Memorial Day, Pentecost. But we need to understand we have the freedom to be here because of what has gone on in the past. And also what has gone on in the past is God sent his spirit to be with us. Mm -hmm. To help us. Life is tough. You know it better than I do. But we are never alone. And one of the strengths we have, though, is congregations like this to help you carry your way through. You can't do it alone, but you are never alone. God is with you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.